Okay, the second group is going to be giving their briefing on the Energy Security and Independence Act of 2022, uh, an act which uh, uh, you may have heard about something called the, the Deficit Reduction Act, which was passed uh, recently, and elements of that bill uh, are shared by this bill. And so if our briefer is ready, why don't we begin? Thank you all. Thank you, Professor Cohen, for the introduction. Good morning. My name is Tyler henning I'm delighted to be here today on behalf of the Energy Security and Independence Act team. So, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my wonderful team, as well as our faculty advisor, Professor Cohen. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the environmental context of our bill. Then, I will talk about the bill itself, the solutions it proposes, and the measures we suggest to measure its success. Finally, I'll discuss our key takeaways and talk about our future steps. But before we dive into talking about the bill, we will first talk about what it indirectly aims to tackle, climate change. Climate change is defined by the UN as long-term shifts in weather patterns and temperatures. Uh, this process is primarily affected by greenhouse gases, the most common of which is carbon dioxide. Greenhouse gases are located in the troposphere and are able to trap radiation and re-emit it into the atmosphere. Uh, by doing this, they actually make our planet comfortable for human lives. However, due to anthropogenic causes, the levels of greenhouse gases rose dramatically, as indicated in this graph, which led to global warming. The world emits around 50 billion metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions every year, the majority of which comes from the energy sector, which accounts for 73% of the total global emissions. According to the EPA, the United States emitted 5,222 million tons of carbon dioxide in 2020 alone, and was found to be the world's most significant contributor to greenhouse gas emissions since the 18th century. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, 75% of, of the U.S. greenhouse gas emissions originates from the energy sector, which accounts for 73% of the country's uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, the energy sector actually uses mostly petroleum, which on its own accounts for 46% of the American emissions. So, as established, greenhouse gases cause climate change. Climate change, on the other hand, leads to disastrous environmental effects. Uh, these effects include severe and frequent weather events, rising sea levels, and disruptions to the global energy supply and security, all of which threaten human lives. But despite all of this, the transition to renewable energy in the U.S. is considered to be somewhat controversial. 72% of Americans believe climate change exists, but 56% of Americans believe it's caused mostly by humans. Additionally, changing geopolitical situation has vast impacts on renewable energy supply chains. Energy transition minerals, for example, are more geographically concentrated, as is a refinement, which may lead to supply chain disruptions. Furthermore, the transition to 100% renewable energy is expected to have high upfront investment which may also act as a deterrent. And this is exactly what our bill aims to tackle. The Energy Security and Independence Act promotes the reduction of reliance on foreign countries for fossil fuels, as well as renewable energy sources and materials. It's doing this by defining energy as a necessary strategic asset and the access to energy as a strategic interest of the United States. It aims to decrease the American usage of fossil fuels by promoting the local renewable energy sector in a way that makes the U.S. self-sufficient by utilizing renewable energy. The bill has five main goals. Reframing energy as a national security concern. Combating reliance on foreign fossil fuels. Combating, <laughs> bolstering domestic uh, renewable energy supply chains providing funds to increase energy efficiency through weatherization and public heat pumps, and finally, prioritizing environmental justice communities. 
The bill allocates $100 billion through the Defense Production Act to reinvigorate the domestic clean energy industrial base. $10 billion will be allocated through loans and grants to bolster the renewable energy supply chain. $30 billion will be used to fund weatherization, and $10 billion will be dedicated to reducing consumption of imported fossil fuels by installing public heat pumps. We found that the Energy Security and Independence Act has three main solutions to, target, to promote its target. The first is expanding the Defense Production Act to increase domestic reno uh, production of renewable energy. The Defense Production Act uh, is a federal law from 1950 that enables the president to uh, direct the local market to support national efforts in time of need. By expanding the DPA to include renewable energy as a matter of national security, the Energy Security and Independence Act aims to utilize two main titles. The first is Title I, which will allow the president to determine which renewable energy goods are critical. It will also enable the president to prioritize governmental contracts in order to produce these goods. The second is Title III, which is, which is the expansion of production capacity and supply. Essentially, it will allow the president to give tangible guarantees to businesses, which will allow these businesses to increase their production capacity and supply strategic goods. The expansion of the DPA is really the main solution proposed by the bill. By reframing renewable energy as a critical good, it will allow a substantial increase in government investment in the sector, as well as the expansion of the usage of renewable energy in the United States as a whole. Um, through the DPA, the president will have the ability to rapidly mobilize the production of renewable energy in the interest of national security. The second solution is uh, investing in, in the renewable energy supply chain while also prioritizing projects which will benefit environmental justice communities. Moreover, this solution aims to create a geographic concentration of manufacturers in the manufacturing supply chain and is expected to create more domestic jobs in the renewable energy sector. The third solution focuses on investing in energy efficiency through weatherization and heat pumps. By investing in energy efficiency, the bill aims to lower the need itself for energy, thus lowering carbon emissions caused by fossil fuels. Weatherization and heat pumps regulate buildings' temperatures while using minimal energy. This will be especially important for environmental justice communities, as it was found that around 25 to 50 percent of their household income is spent on energy. The Energy Security and Independence Act is a multifaceted bill with implications for energy security, renewable energy supply chains, and environmental justice communities. We believe that a range of different indicators will be needed in order to gauge the bill's success in achieving its several goals. Among them are the increase in domestic renewable energy infrastructure, the increase in share of energy from renewable sources, and the increased energy efficiency in households and public buildings. Finally, let's discuss our key takeaways. The Energy Security and Independence Act aims to bolster the U.S. energy independence by expanding its renewable energy sector. This will be done by investing in renewable energy systems and technologies, setting up a domestic supply chain, while also prioritizing environmental justice communities. The act leverages the DPA to reframe energy as a matter of national security in order to increase the share of renewable energy to eventually reach 100%. Next semester, we will conduct a political and technical, uh, and technical feasibility analysis and we'll focus on the policy aspects of the bill. Thank you all for taking part in our journey to learn more about this bill this past semester. Okay. <laughs> Presentation. So my question is that: uh, is there, Does the bill specifically talk about like which type of renewable energy to support, and whether the U.S. has sufficient um, resource and capacity to build them do uh, domestically? 
So the bill doesn't talk specifically about which technologies to support, but it does mention um, solar energy, as it does have actually a very high potential in order to bolster the American renewable energy sector. And actually, <laughs> um, one would only need 0.4% of the U.S. land in order to uh, in order to use solar energy to light up the whole country. Um, yeah, that's about it. Hi, thanks for that excellent presentation. Um, a related question to Songs is, is um, do you, did you, in the kind of controversies um, exploration, did you encounter any sort of environmental impact of the domestic supply chain for renewables in terms of extracting resources or manufacturing? And did you expect a sort of not in my backyard response to the domestic uh, supply chain? Uh, so that's a great question. Um, considering that we are talking about about minerals that might not necessarily be in the states. It's definitely uh, a con when it comes to the bill because it doesn't address it specifically. Uh, however, when it comes to not in my backyard sort of attitude, considering that only 56% of the American people believe that climate change is caused by human actions, we can expect um, that maybe it would be somewhat controversial, but Again, the bill doesn't necessarily address that. Thank you. <clears throat> Wonderful presentation, Tal. I just wanted to ask about uh, the feasibility of heat pumps. How easy are they to install on buildings? And do the current uh, types of you know heat pumps that exist out there can handle the capacity of like let's say yeah like a 17-story building? Um, so yeah, how feasible are they to install and utilize like right now if we were to put them on every building? So actually, um, <laughs> when it comes to heat pumps, um, there are various kinds of heat pumps. Um, from my knowledge anyway, the most common of which is an era heat pump. They're very effective when it comes to regulating buildings' temperatures. Um, to say if they would be able to to regulate the temperature of a 17 uh, floor building, I would assume yes, but don't hold me on that. Uh, if you want, I would be able to look into that and get back to you. But generally speaking, it's a very well-established technology, uh, and it is used in a lot of different places in the US. And so, yeah, I'll get back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I'm wondering about um, bolstering the production of, of renewable energy technology in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, do they expect that those industries will be able to compete with cheap solar panels from abroad? And are there any mechanisms in place to, to protect US industry in case that they are not price competitive? So because the bill actually plans to allocate a lot of money in order to fund um, the local market, then maybe it would be able to also um, assist specific companies uh, when it comes to manufacturing um, these sort of technologies. Uh, but when it comes to competing with companies from abroad and foreign imports, that's still to be to be figured out. Yeah. Thank you.